Welcome back you guys. Today Team Ninja has released patch 1.06 for World of Long Fallen Dynasty. There are a decent amount of patch adjustments and major bug fixes that are currently in these patch notes. We're going to go over all of the changes that have been made and a majority of the solid bug fixes that they've implemented with patch 1.06. So the first initial feature that they've added to World Long in version 1.06's patch is they added the feature Inner Discipline. This inner discipline feature allows players to set their own maximum morale rank. This is going to be accessible via the battle preparation and then inner discipline in the battle flag menu. And what this basically allows is for us to set a maximum morale rank on our character. So you can see that inner discipline will prevent morale rank from actually rising above the set limit that you set when you obtain morale points by defeating enemies or performing fatal strikes. This is going to make it to where if you really want to set a challenge for yourself, you're going to be able to set that maximum morale rank for whatever reason and essentially not go over it when you defeat enemies. You can see we've unlocked the inner discipline menu here. And now once you go into battle preparations and you go into inner discipline, so you can see here our current maximum morale rank is set to 25. So this change is actually a lot bigger than you initially think because it's going to allow us to get a lot more gear in terms of rarity, in terms of five star gear gray sets than previously before. And so the way this works, you can see here that you can set your maximum battle morale rank and the higher an enemy's morale rank is compared to yours means the higher the drop rate of rare items will be when you defeat them. So if you beat enemies with a higher morale rank compared to yours, let's say yours is 10 and you defeat a morale rank 20 major boss, you're going to get much higher drop rates for rare items this way. So if you're trying to farm a specific set from a specific boss, you can set your maximum morale rank here. And this is going to make sure that you don't go over that in case you want to farm or give yourself a challenge, for instance. So you can see we can come in here and we can change this. We can set it to literally whatever we want. Let's say we set it to 19. It's now going to set our maximum morale rank at 19. And also one of the big features of this is since I'm in the Hidden Village, my current rank is 20. If I actually apply this, it means my current morale rank will be lowered to reach this value. So if we click yes and proceed, it's going to lower our morale rank. And this is going to be really great, I'm sure, for farming at some level because if we want to set this at 1, we're now setting it at 1. So if you can pull off a actual boss fight and we'll probably go into testing for this, you actually probably are going to get some insane gear this way. And simply go back and reset it to 20 or whatever you want your max to be. So with that being said, this feature will actually be disabled uh, when you're participating in recruit and invade sessions specifically and the elixir and burial flag buffs that increase morale rank will still be applied above the maximum limit. So if you set a maximum limit of 20 and you're at let's say 20 and you use an elixir potion, it's still going to bump your morale rank up. They made changes to the reinforcements menu so that a handshake icon will now be displayed next to the companions who have accompanied the player at least once. So if we actually go into reinforcements here, you can now see next to the player's names, there's actually a handshake icon, meaning they have been our companion in a battle at least once. So this is good just to keep track of that for achievement's sake. And this is specifically the Great Gatherings achievement. So this is good just to add to another item we're going to be able to track and make the game that much easier. Another change they made was added icons to display the location of the blacksmith and the old man. This is a decent change as you can see here. It's not really one that's needed, but it's one of the things that should have been in the game in general. So this is good. You can see the icon for his house here and the blacksmith icon on the map as well. Now these are some decent adjustments that were made. So the following adjustments were made to the actual item elixir. So they changed the mechanics of the effects so that the morale rank increase is now treated as an actual buff effect that expires after a set period of time. Meaning when you consume an elixir, it is no longer permanent. It is a set period of time acting as, like we already mentioned, a buff effect on your character. They changed the morale rank, however, increased from one to three. Meaning now when you drink one, instead of going up one morale rank, you actually go up three morale ranks. But again, it is on a timer now and it is not a permanent thing until you die. They've also changed the durations of the effects from 30 seconds to 60 seconds from when you actually drink the potion, meaning those effects and debuffs that you get from that are going to last a little bit longer. So you can see here upon using an elixir, it does pass that maximum limit. And you can also see our debuffs here that we're currently getting. So our debuffs are going to last a lot longer, meaning if we do use this elixir to actually raise our morale rank, we're going to be constantly stacking negative spirit, making fighting overall a lot harder. 
And you can see if I take this elixir with lighter armor on versus my heavy armor, it doesn't actually seem to have that much effect on our negative spirit that we're getting. We're still getting the same amount, but we're still maxing out on our negative spirit here. Meaning if you do use an elixir, it's going to be a little bit harder to fight. You can see here once these effects drain all the way down to zero, our morale rank is going to go from 23 to 20 almost on the dot meaning these effects are going to be active the entire time and since this is time based now like i mentioned already it's not permanent it's going to last the same time as the actual effects themselves meaning 60 seconds this is another adjustment they enlarged the affinity hitbox of the flame area generated by the demonized zhao dun's tail so that it will be easier to neutralize the flames by taking advantage of five phase affinities they adjusted the activation timing for the special effect subtlety of the water phase so that it occurs after the fatal strike sequence is complete rather than at the start of fatal strikes meaning if you're using a gray set that uses the subtlety of water phase that's just another good bonus for you and they also made adjustments so that the lock on mechanics would not target enemies awaiting aid this is good because especially in pvp if you've played enough you know that you can accidentally target someone that's awaiting aid instead of the one or two other people that are up that you have to worry about actually fighting this makes it even better now they also have a major list of bug fixes here and i'm not going to go through every single one but i'll go through a couple that are definitely worth noting so they fixed crash prone situations that occurred in certain environments they fixed a bug that allowed some players to go out of bounds in certain maps so they've made a bunch of positive changes here about getting stuck um, going out of bounds, crashes, other, as well as many other bugs for specific missions. There are many of these bugs that they fix throughout individual levels. You can see a ton of actual bugs fixed here for very specific levels, as well as overall in the game, graphics, and crashing and other changes. And it's good that these bugs are getting fixed very consecutively here. They've also made some major bug fixes here where they fixed a bug in which the mouse could not be used outside of the game screen. When using the keyboard only controller type in controller settings, they fixed a bug that calls the UI for special effect details within the equip menu to flicker in the 120 FPS setting, which a majority of people and I myself included use. And I have definitely noticed this as well and fixed a bug that prevented the wizardry spells menu from being displayed in full screen and ultra wide resolutions. I did again actually notice this when playing on my ultra wide monitor. So that's good that that is resolved. Overall version 1.06 brought us some decent adjustments for Wolong that I'm going to be testing out over the next week to see if our morale rank changes affect drop rates very much at all. And if so, I'll make sure to post that here and I'll link all of the changes in the description in case you want to scroll down really quick and click on those to check those out specifically. And while you're down there, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. That being said, thank you guys.